What's going on everybody, Victor here with a brand new video and UFC Fight Night London Part 2 in the year of 2022 has a brand new co-main event. The rumors are true, the news is true. Darren Till, one of the most well-known fighters, if not the most popular fighter in all the UK, had to withdraw from his fight against the Joker Jack Hermanson as a result of an undisclosed injury. But rumors have spread that that injury had to do with his knee. He's been having some knee problems over the last couple of years. He's had stem cell treatment on that knee. And now it looks like he's going to have to get full-on surgery to, re to, ha to help that knee recover to the absolute max, to get it back to 100%, just because Darren has already pulled out of a couple of fights for the last couple of years. And if he doesn't get this problem fixed, soon then it's just only going to continue to be more of a hindrance to him and he's only going to continue to l l miss more fights in, in the future so darren till out the ufc had to look for a replacement extremely fast as possible one of the replacements that was very much possible to replace darren till was gilbert burns gilbert burns possibly making a move up towards another weight class yet again up the middleweight he used to be a lightweight moved up to welterweight he fought for the title against kamar uzman lost and it would have been interesting to see Gilbert Burns move up the middleweight because Gilbert Burns is a big guy in general. Obviously, when he's not in training camp, he looks like a big individual and he looks like he's more than 200 pounds. And he probably is. He's a beefy guy. He's a lean individual. But the UFC didn't give him that fight. I really would have loved to see Gilbert Burns versus Jack Hermanson just because both these individuals are grapplers. But out, out goes there until in comes... Chris, the action man, Curtis, an individual that had fought everywhere on the regional scene. He fought in the PFL, didn't really have that much luck because he was fighting as a welterweight. Inserted him into the UFC as a middleweight, and he has had a lot of success ever since. Moving up to middleweight, another division, a division higher than what he's used to in welterweight when he was fighting over the PFL. And he's been on a tear ever since. He's 3-0. He's had an undefeated record with the UFC. He defeated Phil Hawes via KO in the second round when things weren't looking so good. He defeated Brendan Allen in back and forth action pack contest in the second round as well via KO. And he most recently, a couple weeks ago, defeated Rodolfo Vieira via decision. And that was also an interesting fight because of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu accolades of Rodolfo Vieira, but Chris Curtis was able to take that fight anywhere he really wanted to, and he wasn't really in danger that much during the course of that fight, and he was really able to take the fight to Rodolfo Vieira and win that fight via decision. Now, if there's one thing I really like about this matchup is, is that both these individuals have been around the block and back. Both these individuals have fought for other high, highly touted organizations outside of the UFC before making their UFC debuts. Obviously, Jack Hermanson used to fight for Bellator MMA before making his UFC debut and didn't have a lot of success in other promotions, especially in Europe. And like I said, Chris Curtis fought in different promotions all around the U.S. before making his way to the PFL and making his way up to the UFC, which is the top-notch mixed martial arts promotion in the whole entire world. But like I said, both these individuals, Jack the Joker, Hermanson, he has a 23-7 and seven record. He has 11 KOs and 6 submissions. 17 finishes in total. The action man, Chris Curtis, 29-8 and eight with 16 KOs and 1 submission. 17 finishes in total as well. Both these individuals have 17 finishes each, which means that there's a high probability that this fight is not going to go the full 15 rounds. It's going to be a grappler versus a striker. We all know that Chris Curtis does a lot of his work on the feet. He's a very powerful individual, even though he doesn't really look like it at times. He does take some shots, but he also gives it back, and he's not afraid to go to the ground as well. Then you got Jack Hermanson, which does a lot of his work on the ground. He has some legendary ground and pound. If he can get his opponent's on the ground and him was a ground and pound and really pummeled him then he usually ends up finishing the fight he's also known the strike on the feet as well but lately it hasn't really been working out for him obviously his last fight was against chris curtis's teammate sean strickland and that fight was a little bit of a snooze fest it wasn't really a fan favorite contest for all of us so obviously that didn't really look too good for him and then he ended up facing marvin vittori who is really outside of the rankings you know outside of i think i believe marvin was ranked 8 or ranked 9, maybe even 10, but Jack Hermanson took a risk, ended up taking that fight, ended up losing, and even before that fight, 
Jack Hermanson fought. Calvin Gastelum submitted him in the first round. And he did also have a fight against Edmund Shavazian. He wasn't looking too good in that first round. He was getting pieced up, but he was able to take that fight to the ground. And like I said, the ground and pound did the rest, and the rest was history. So, obviously, Jack Hermanson being 2-2 two and two in his last four fights. And then you've got Chris Curtis, who's 3-0 in the UFC, looking to make it 4-0. And Jack Hermanson is trying to get back to the top of the middleweight division, trying not to be a gatekeeper, but at, at this rate, it's almost looking like that. But... The keys to victory for Chris Curtis is going to have to be the takedown defense. If he can be able to keep this fight on the feet, then he has a great possibility of being able to get that KO. He's most likely going to come in here as an underdog. His last three fights, he's been coming in as an underdog, and he's been able to prove everybody wrong. And now you've got Jack Hermanson that's trying to take out this hype train, that's trying to take out the teammate of an individual that he's fought in the past and lost to, and... Jack Hermanson, like I said, he's come so close. He was ranked in the top five in the past. He's trying to get back to that. He's going to have to get an emphatic finish and fight another individual that's in that top seven, top eight of the weight class to get back into that top five and try to fight for the title as he's already clean house. And uh, I don't know who else is there for him to fight besides Alex Pereira. And it looks like the UFC is going to go along for that fight. But if Alex Pereira loses, then is he... Basically, pretty much cleans out the whole house, except for Jack the Joker Hermanson, who has not fought yet. So there's always still a great possibility that the Joker can be able to make another run and be able to fight Izzy for the UFC Middleweight Championship of the World. But Chris Curtis, like I said, he's been an underdog in his last couple of fights. He can play spoiler, and he has a huge possibility of knocking Jack Hermanson out. You know, Jack Hermanson got hurt by Marvin Vittori on the feet. We all know Marvin, you know, Marvin's got power, but he doesn't have that huge amount of power, that one punch KO power that can really put people's lights out. Chris Curtis has that power, and if he can keep the fight on the feet the whole entire time, then he can definitely be able to finish Jack Hermanson. If the fight does go down to the ground, if Chris Curtis does get taken down, then all he has to really do is just watch the submission attempts and try to get to against, I mean, defense of the Yadigan, walk his way back up, use that crab walk to walk himself towards the defense of the Yadigan, and really be able to, little by little, bring himself back up to his feet. And if he's trying to get take, if he's if he's going to get a takedown or he's defending an attempt, use the overhooks or use the use the underhooks that can really be able to help you out. Really sink in that wizard and really make it as hard as possible for Jack Hermanson to get that takedown defense as possible. That way he could be able to expand a little bit of his energy and get a little bit tired in the process. If I'm Jack Hermanson, then I'm going to have to not only just throw some volume, but also make it into an ugly fight and also put the pressure on Chris Curtis because Chris Curtis likes to walk forward. So both these individuals are most likely going to walk forward. They're going to meet in the middle of the octagon. They're going to strike. They're going to bang. And... Someone might go to sleep, someone might get knocked down, and if there's one thing about Chris Curtis that I like, he likes to rip to the body. If I'm Jack Hermanson, I'm going to utilize his space, I'm definitely going to use some kicks as well. I ha Chris Curtis does use a lot of kicks, but he doesn't yank to use it that much. He likes to rip to the body, he likes to rip to the head. And if I'm Jack Hermanson, I'm going to go to the calf kicks, slow that movement down of Chris Curtis, and not only to the calves, I'm going to try to take it to the body as well, take as much oxygen away from Chris Curtis as possible and try to work the feints and work the jabs and go in for some fake takedown takedown attempts. That way you can really get Chris Curtis jumping because Chris Curtis, Chris Curtis is going to think about the takedown attempts. And if that can happen, then he can use that opportunity to really go in for a finishing blow or really be able to pin him up against the fence, trip him up, and put him on his back and really go in for that ground and pound. But it's a really interesting fight. I'm going to go with Chris Curtis on this one because he's been an underdog during his last three fights. Mostly he's going to be an underdog in this fight. And Jack Hermanson's last four fights, like I said, two wins, two losses. It's not looking so good for Jack Hermanson. Last time he faced someone that was pretty much lower ranked than him was Marvin Vittori, and that fight ended up ending in a unanimous decision victory for Marvin Vittori, so I don't think this is going to look good 
for Jack Hermanson. His history track record has, show, has shown it so far. And I think Chris Curtis is going to come in here. And I think he's going to get the finish. And not, not early, but I believe it's going to happen in the second round. Because he did knock out... He did knock out Phil Hawes and Brendan Allen in the second round. I believe he's going to continue that trend against Jack Hermanson and really cement himself in the UFC as an elite middleweight. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Who do you guys think is going to win this fight? The Joker, Jack Hermanson, or the action man, Chris Curtis. Two really cool fighter names, to be honest. And I can't wait to watch this fight. I think it's going to be an interesting one. The, the intrigue. From the fall of Darren Till and the insertion of Chris Curtis, obviously Chris Curtis isn't really a big, fan, isn't a big fan favorite over in the UK as Darren Till is, and the fans were definitely unhappy to hear about this news. But I can guarantee you, to all the UK fans out there, all the England fans out there, get get ready for this one because it's gonna be a wild ride. Appreciate you guys. Take it easy. Stay safe and stay blessed. Later.